Okay, we have looked at uh, modeling the MJO uh, and predictions in other contexts like the uh, S2S forecast course I have and the tropical dynamics and so on. I'm going to revisit it here in the context of this paper on 50 years of MJO. This is a uh, figure from the paper which is reproduced, it, which itself is reproduced from an earlier paper that looked at CMIP6 models. Uh, earlier we looked at a CMIP, CMIP6 models as well compared to CMIP5 models where it was argued that more of the CMIP6 models are uh, able to better simulate the transition of MJOs across the maritime continent which remains a key uh, uh, question even in terms of understanding. We don't know exactly why <coughs> certain MJOs get stuck, certain MJOs become weaker and then strengthen again, some are uh, detoured southward and so on. So this is showing MJO propagation in GCMs that participated in the MJO task force and the uh, GVEX uh, model assessment uh, comparison project represented by longitude time evolution of rainfall anomalies. They are averaged over 10 south to 10 north which is typically what is done for capturing the MJO related filtered uh, precipitation signals. These are based on uh, lag regressions of 20 to 100 day filtered anomalous rainfall against itself averaged over the eastern Indian Ocean. Uh, so that gives you a sense of propagation. Uh, dash line in each panel denotes the 5 meter per second eastward propagation phase speed which is the uh, observed MJO uh, phase speed. So here is the observed estimate from uh, a uh, reanalysis um, and then various coupled models are shown and you can see that there are some that looks look reasonable so the uh, maritime continent is somewhere here between 100 degree east and 130 degree east or so and in the composite these are composites over many events or l when you do regression that's what you get um, you see the uh, amplitude can be weaker or the uh, weakening across the maritime continent can be different so the the wet phase and the dry phase or the convective phase and the dry phase and some of them have basically no propagation across so this one many of them stall on the Indian Ocean side some of them transition across but uh, have weaker representation uh, while crossing whereas some seem to do much more reasonably. Here TAMU CAMP 4 is doing reasonably well, PNU CFS, uh, MRI AGCM 3 and so on and there are many issues. Uh, convective parameterization uh, affects MJO f uh, dynamics in the models and uh, sadly uh, when MJO is improved uh, then uh, the mean state bias tends to get worse which is a kind of uh, competition between where the convective energy is going and model standard mean biases affect not only MJO dynamics but also uh, MJO predictions. Uh, some models for example do better predictions when they are uncoupled rather than when they are coupled but most models tend to increase the amplitude of the MJO uh, when they are coupled uh, there are lots of problems, uh, surface precipitation rates, uh, in other words uh, rainfall efficiency, how much is condensed in the water column versus how much falls to the surface, how much is advected away as clouds and so on. So those details matter, the uh, details of the convective parameterizations matter, matter. Uh, there have been experiments done with of course cloud resolving models as we mentioned before but also what are called uh, super parameterizations where a GCM is taken and uh, at some grid points uh, explicit cloud resolving models are uh, embedded, embedded so they're called uh, cloud uh, they are called super parameterizations and they tend to improve certain things but in the end uh, there are two approaches one is a GCM that explicitly uh, resolves MJO so that you can understand uh, simulate predict and project MJOs uh, into the future 
and there is the engineering approach where you just want to improve uh, the prediction uh, by doing whatever is necessary if it's necessary to run it uncoupled then you run it uncoupled to get a mjo uh, as long as it remains skillful but hopefully you are advancing process understanding so that slowly you are moving towards predictive understanding being improved and predictions being improved as well so there are lots of other details about convective parameterizations uh, being modified with convective uh, momentum transport dilute plume approximations uh, and so on so one of the key ingredients that we already looked at before when we looked at cmip6 cmip5 comparisons was the zonal and meridional gradients of moisture so the uh, gradients of moisture uh, seem to be very critical for um, accurate simulations and predictions of mjos so here is the mjo prediction skill from uh, various models uh, and 0.5 so that's correlation between um, RMM prediction skill so it's a bivariate correlation coefficient for all days between the observation and ensemble means from S2S subseasonal to seasonal and another group called sub X during November to March the refocasts are the same uh, used in limb and limb so uh, reforecast is basically going back in time and doing uh, forecasts again which tends to improve skill basically because you have new information and you are uh, improving the initialization and so on and so forth uh, for the forecasts uh, when the bivariate correlation is above 0.5 you consider a useful skill and here is the forecast lead day so obviously some of them drop off pretty quickly here seems to be the Navy ESPC model uh, some have a uh, pretty uh, long uh, persistence time uh, like the S2S group here uh, out to uh, almost four weeks theoretical predictability uh, using models predictability is something you do with the models you take a model you assume one of them is a perfect MJO simulation and use other model simulations to try to predict the perfect simulation and uh, that gives you kind of an upper limit on predictability which obviously is model dependent and it's a very much a model construct uh, either way the the predictability time horizon seems to be seven weeks but in reality you you see that none of them really accomplish uh, prediction skill out to seven weeks uh, there are many applications which uh, we talk about in the s2s forecast uh, uh, application course on my uh, uh, website on my YouTube channel but uh, even at three to four five pentads uh, you can still have very useful applications for crop calendars for health for irrigation for energy uh, and so on and so forth okay so uh, again uh, predictions skills are being improved and there is a uh, lot uh, to learn still uh, the idea is not to discourage you or tell you that models uh, don't do well or that we don't understand MJOs. MJO understanding and observations and modeling and predictions uh, continue to improve but it's always good to have a very clear idea of where the knowledge gaps are and where the data needs are and where the improvements uh, will come from where there is uh, predictability for example uh, model predictions depend on uh, uh, coupling the ocean but that depends sometimes on individual MJOs because dynamo field experiment showed that air sea interactions are not the same for all MJOs and MJO skill also tends to depend on uh, whether you are starting a weak MJO or a strong MJO so signal to noise matters as well as in which phase it is uh, if you start in the Indian Ocean and the uh, Pacific you seem to have a higher skill than if you start elsewhere uh, in the Western Hemisphere uh, and so on so lots of details there which provide insights into uh, what uh, uh, how the mean bias of the model how the coupling in the model how the precipitation efficiency in the model uh, convective parameterization in the model and so on affect uh, MJO simulations and uh, prediction skills okay so we'll leave it here and uh, go on to the next uh, podcast uh, continuing with this 50 years of MJO uh, theme okay